This is going to be a continuing series of walk around St. Helens, but the name will be today a walk around the pudding bag. Um, that's the entrance to the pudding bag there. Um, there's nothing really left of the street or what was the pudding bag or what um, I'm talking about today. Um, there's literally, I've just had a look around, there's only the evidence of the railways that's there. So we'll be walking around the railways, um, around the triangle that made up the pudding bag. Um, so. So the pudding bag, um, a little bit of history on the pudding bag. It was comprised of two streets forming a triangle, basically. Um, the first street would have been Woodcock Street, earlier known as uh, Church Street, but they changed it in 1902 to stay for confusion with um, with Church Street in St. Thomas Town Centre, and you had Railway Terrace. The houses were originally built for railway key workers or workers of the railway. Um, later on, the story goes that Pudding Bag set up some bakeries, some pudding makers here. And um, I can't really retort the, um, the complete lingo in the, what I've just read. But apparently uh, a jam roly pole was, um, you could only eat it from one side, I think, open end of a jam roly poly with there only being one way in and out of the pudding bag that's how it's got its name the pudding bag only one way in and out so only one way to eat a jam roly poly i think is the lingo or is what i've got from it so um around here uh, this was a major junction for railways um all built around the 1800s so over there you've got the manchester liverpool line liverpool manchester line that goes straight across there that's the junction, uh, that's the Runcorn Gap line up there, the bridge we've just walked under. And then there was a railway, um, there was part of the railway that went on the other side, straight over to junction that way. So we'll be walking over there anyway, and there's some remains of the railway, which is pretty evident, so we'll walk over that way in a sec. Um, this is what's left of the pudding bag anyway, very much not much left. You couldn't even tell if there was a house here anymore plenty of evidence from railways plenty of sleepers but you couldn't tell there was a railway a ter set of terraced houses over here at all i think it is private land i am walking on at the moment um this is all private hence why it's in such a state nothing's really being done it's not being redeveloped um maybe some of these bricks over here are part of the pudding bag i don't really really don't know um Anyway, there was about 200 people who lived around this pudding bag, around the pudding bag, 200 people, quite a thriving community. Um, they had their own pub. I think it was called the Golden Bells or the Golden Golden Balls or something like that. The Golden Goose. One of thought, actually, look at this. Don't know whether, nah, it's just more uh, industrial sheds or what have you. I'm not gonna go for too far back into this, sir, uh, cause it's just overgrown and pointless. So we'll pause it there and get some more information down. Living on the pudding bag was actually quite dangerous. Um, with there only be, being one way in and out of the pudding bag, you had to usually wait at um, a level crossing and wait for someone to let you past. So people would always risk their lives and risk getting home in and out of the pudding bag by crossing the railway. So I said, we're going to go for a walk around and show you the perimeter of the pudding bag and the perimeter of the pudding bag, basically. Um, there was one fella killed, I think it is, in 1861, when he was trying to jump through um, the gaps of railway wagons, in between the gaps of some railway wagons, um, and an engine was pulling off on the other side of the tracks, and he unfortunately got uh, knocked down by one of the trains. Um, there was a pub here, as I just mentioned, it was called the Golden... I think originally called the Golden Balls, um, and that would have been at the entrance of the pudding bag, so I'm guessing around here anyway. I don't have any, any actual maps, but apparently at the entrance of the pudding bag was the Golden Balls pub, um, which, well, this is the entrance, so it must have been around here. So we're going back up to onto the railway line now. Uh, pause you and turn you around. It's just showing the perimeter of the pudding bag, um, the abandoned railways, which would have had a hell of a lot of activity on them once upon a time. Um, with it being, how many, one, two main lines and a junction line. I'm not too up to date with a uh, railway lingo, so <laughs> someone can uh, make sense of it. So actually, 
I'm going to turn left first. First railway over railway crossing is over here. Literally the first railway over railway crossing, I think, in the world. Um, unfortunately, it's been pulled down. I don't think it's listed. The bridgehead, uh, the bridgehead is still there. But, uh, school right next to me, so I can't. It's obviously, I've got my hand up next to my camera there, so I don't get to school. <laughs> um, yeah, so the first railway over railway crossing, um, that was here, connecting, going over from the Runcorn Gap line over the Manchester Liverpool line or the Liverpool Manchester line, whichever way you want to say it. Ah, bloody hell. Oh, bloody hell. Lots of nettles and stingies. It's just not being protected at all, is it? So once upon a time, this was a keen spot for a... Uh... Ah, here you go. Yeah, see ya. Would have been a keen spot for your train spotters. But look. <sighs> Literally, that's what's left of the first railway over railway crossing. Let's get her around the other side. This is the bridgehead here. That's part of where the bridgehead would have run off. I think there has been put a bridge put in place over here. <sighs> yeah, it's a high bridge though. So here you go, this is what's left of it. Oh, well, uh, I can get my camera on. Yeah, so, um, uh, which way is the fork going that way? Is it that way? Yes. Um, yeah, I'm going to, I can't even see what's left of it. So I've got to watch over the video now and see what's left of it myself. But that's basically what's left of the first railway over railway crossing. Very much not little. So we're going to turn around anyway, get back on the rail line. And do the perimeter of the pudding bag. There's another bridgehead over here too, which... It fascinates me, kind of. So I'm a bit boring like that. So, um, yeah, you've just seen me walk through all this, so I'll edit the next part in. So, from the bridgehead here, um, that's the entrance to the pudding bag. I'm going to stop saying the pudding bag. <laughs> yeah, that's the entrance there. We're going to follow the path down that way. Um, in a second, just making sure someone's not lost the phone. We're going to pass, um, we're going to follow the path down this way, the railway track down this way. Um, this is the Runcorn Gap line now, but then we're going to turn right onto I think where um, the junctions connect. So the Runcorn Gap line carried on here, but it also came off here, um, connecting up to Junction Station. It's a bit bumpy and wobbly, and the next investment is a gyroscopic uh, gimbal. They're a hundred pound for a decent one. So, in a few months. Um, something else could add into the video. Well, a bit of information. Along the left-hand side here, there was massive nunnery and covenants. Uh, massive covenants. And uh, Abbey, is it an Abbey? Monastery. Massive monastery. Um, but it's everything's gone of it there is something left underground but there's no access to it it's been form injected concrete there was a part of the old morg i think it was but it's been form injected concreted um but that's underground see there's some old old bits of rubbish down there i know it's old rubbish but i just saw a bucket of some description oh no them bricks look old. That's all I, what I was looking at then. 
old rubbish like from the, the 1930s and 40s. It's next to gold, it tells stories in itself. So as I said, I'm just walking up the Runcorn Gap line doing the perimeter of the pudding bag. Um, I think it turns off here. So it's quite a big area actually, walking along it. Um, there was a way, there was a bridge um, put in a bit later. Um, I'm going to try and get permission to have some vid uh, photos from the archives put into this video so people can see. Um, I suppose it's not a before and after because there's nothing left that you can go off the... Uh, using a bit of an imagination, you can, you get the picture. So, yeah, yeah, junction. So, this, where all the overgrownness is there, that's the, once again, the Runcorn Gap line. That goes from, basically, it had connections up to Moss Bank, um, Moss Bank, it had connections all over. You could go up to Moss Bank from here on a train. And obviously you can see where it ran. And here, it's the bridgehead. Um, so there would have been um, a track that went off over here onto the level ground over there. Um, so, the perimeter of the pudding bag now turns off down here. You can see the evidence of where the bridge led actually, where all the railway stones are, and then straight across over there. Oh, yeah. oh, so, down here, I don't think this was an official way down for the trains. <laughs> Look at all these railway stones on the ground. There would have been another track here. And now we're walking back on ourselves down the old track which would have went to St. Helens Junction itself, to the St. Helens Junction station itself. Um, with the junction gap line, with the line that connected up to here, being the... Or oh, one of them, because it could have carried on through the trees though, I'm not too sure. So on the right hand side now we're walking where the pudding bag, the triangle of the pudding bag actually, yeah. You can see it, there's the, yeah, the point, uh, the angle of the triangle. <laughs> we walk down here. So there would have been railway wagons hauled along here, all over here. It was, as I said, one of the ways in and out of the, uh, out of the, uh, is it Woodcock Street? Yeah, uh, that would have been a way, in a way of, in and out of Woodcock Street is literally gambling with your life. Dog walker, one minute. Bumped into a very nice gentleman <laughs> walking. He's, I was more scared of his dog, and then the dog turns out it's well, big softer. So, yeah, this is the carrying on around the perimeter of the pudding bag. So, as I said, that's the old building over there. Um, that old burnt out garage we walked straight past. So, this would have been once again, this is just old railway lines that are left here, railway sleepers, railway stones that's left. You can still see visible traces of the railway here. If, if you were allowed, you could just walk straight onto Junction from here. Um, so, yeah, this is going to be pretty much the end because I can't get to the other section of the railway from here. Um, it's all fenced off and it's live. Excuse me, it's live. So, this is pretty much the end of the pudding bag video. So, just a word, quick recap over cap. Um, Help. What have I seen here? <laughs> I've not noticed this before. Um, anyway, just to do a quick recap. Um, the Pudding Bag was a community of 200 people comprised up of Wood, Woodcock Street and uh, Railway Terrace, originally built for railway workers. Um, a few... A bakery set up on there, it was a thriving community. About 200 people lived within this little triangle. And as I said, they would go across uh, the railway lines to get to and from the Junction Village or Sutton Oak as it's known. Um, there you go, there's the end of the walk now, end of the railway. Um, 
and there was only really one official way in and out of the pudding bag until later on a bridge was put in. Um, there was the Golden Balls pub over here, I love that name, to be honest. I think I can't continue here because I think this is owned by Travellers and that's it. <laughs> but thanks very much uh, for watching the video. Uh, please like, leave a comment, tell me a story about um, the pudding bag if you remember it. Uh, leave a comment in below. I am just going to edit this together um, as is. I'll put the like a uh, edit up first, the first edit up um, like I usually do. And then I'll put um, some pictures in um, when I've got permissions and stuff. So thanks for watching. Just a little uh, walk around the pudding bag. So that's going to be my little series, my St. Helens series. Walk around St. Helens, the pudding bag.